Your warm-up today will take place on page 349 in your workbook, not in your composition book. On page 349, you're going to estimate the locations of these fractions on the number line and label the points A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. So for example, 2 fourths is the same as 1 half, so we're going to place K directly over 1 half. 2 sixths is the same as 1 third. If you think about a pi, a third of a pi is smaller than a half, so we're going to place 1 third to the left of 1 half, and we're going to label that with L. 2 thirds, if we have two of them, that would take up more than half of a pi, so we're going to place that to the right of 1 half, and label it with J. Remember, this is estimating the location so you don't have to have it perfect in the right spot but it should be pretty close to where those locations are in comparison to zero one half and one for these problems we are evaluating meaning figure out what the answer would be to add fractions they need to have the same denominator so i'm going to multiply by three to get that 2 to turn into a 6. Now I have 5 6 plus 3 6. 5 plus 3 is 8. In addition and subtraction, we keep the denominator the same. You could rewrite this as 4 thirds or 1 and 1 third. Or you can leave it as 8 sixths. B, I have 0 0.83 repeating. I'm going to place a couple more just as a reference, and then I'm adding 0 0.5. If I had a bunch of zeros here, those would remain 3s. 8 plus 5 is 13, so this is 1.3 repeating. Again, I need to have common denominators for subtraction, so this is 5 sixths minus 3 sixths. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 goes into 2 once and into, two, into 6 three times, so you can reduce that to 1 third. Here I have 0 0.83 repeating, I'm just writing down a couple as a reference, minus 0 0.5. If I subtract 0 from 3, those remain 3s. 8 minus 5 is 3, so this is 0 0.3 repeating. Now, you might notice that 0.3 repeating is the same as 1 third, and 1.3 repeating is the same as 1 and 1 third. We're just adding them in the fraction formats subtracting them in the fraction formats, and then the decimal version of the same problem. Okay, for this one we're going to start with 1.34. So it is between 1 and 2 on the number line. We're going to zoom in. And so now they've broken it up into tenths, and you can see 1.34 is between 1.3 and 1.4, and we'll continue to zoom in to the hundredths where 1.34 is located. Let's look at 1.3 repeating. That is also between 1 and 2, and 1.3 repeating is going to be between 1.3 and 1.4 as well. So when we zoom in to the tenths, we should see it between 1.3 and 1.4. This is 1.33, so it should be between 1.33 and 1.34 if we go into the hundredths. Then if we continue, it should be between 1.333 and 1.334 if we continue to zoom in even further. And this is going to continue to occur. We're going to get closer and closer to that number, but we're never going to actually be able to reach it on our number line. We know where it's located based on 
other points around it. But we're going to have to continue to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in forever. Number three asks you to write your observations from the number line demonstration. I wrote that I noticed the terminating decimal 1.34 could be plotted on a tick mark. It could be plotted in a specific location on the number line. However, the repeating decimal 1.3 repeating couldn't be plotted on a specific line or tick mark. It was always between two tick marks, no matter how much we zoomed in. You would have to continue to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and it would still be between two tick marks. For problems four through nine, plot both rational numbers on the same number line, then compare them using less than or greater than. Well, negative one should be on a tick mark. Negative three fourths, is gonna be three fourths of the way to negative one. I see here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten marks on here. So if I were to split them in three fourths, it would be 0.75 would be the decimal version. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. So there's negative three fourths, and there is negative one. Now less than is over here on the left side of our number line and greater numbers are on the right side of the number line. So negative one is to the left, so it is less than negative three-fourths. Negative 1.7 would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tick marks away from negative one. And then negative two would be located on that mark there. Negative 2 is to the left, so negative 1.7 is actually greater than as it's to the right of negative 2. 1 is here. 1.2 repeating, well this would be 1.1, 1.2, but it's just a little bit over 1.2. So 1.2 is greater, so we're going to open up that mouth to the 1.2. I have negative 0.3, that's 1, 2, 3 to the left. 7 fifths, well 5 fits into 7 one time with 2 fifths left over. We could rewrite that as 4 tenths or 1.4. So that is 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And 1.4 is greater than, so we're opening that mouth to 7 fifths. Negative 1.1 repeating is just to the left of negative 1.1. Negative 6.5 would be between 6 and 7 marks to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right in the middle. This is negative 0.65. This is negative 1.1 repeating. This one is bigger, so we're going to open the mouth to the bigger one. Negative 0.25, that'd be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. 5 ninths, I don't know that one off the top of my head, but we can use some long division to help us approximate. 9 does not fit into 5, but it does fit into 50. 9 times 5 is 45. And then it fits into there 5 times. So this is 0.5 repeating, but negative. So negative 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Somewhere in the middle there. I guess this is a negative. So negative 0.25 is to the right, meaning it is greater. So open the mouth towards the greater one. Three students recorded their distances in a standing long jump competition. Logan jumped two and three eighths meters. Abdul jumped 
2.36 meters, and Sean jumped 2 and 4 ninths meters. Who jumped the farthest? Well, let's figure out what 3 eighths changes into. 8 fits into 30 3 times. That would give us 6. 8 fits into 60. 8 times 5 is 40. 48. 56. So 7. And then it fits into 45 times. So this one is 2.375. And we need four ninths. Nine fits into 40. Three times. Three times nine is. No, wait, four times. Oops. Four times nine is 36. That will leave us with four. Fits in there four times. And so on. So this is 2.4 repeating, or 2.44444. So who jumped the farthest? These are in meters, so the farthest would be the largest number. These are both 2.3, and this one is 2. So Sean jumped the farthest. Historically, the average distance of a jump in this competition is 2.3 meters. Who was closest to the historical average? So 2.36 or 2.37? Well, this is 2.30. So 2.36 is closer than 2.37. So this is Abdul. Two point three six is closer to two point three zero than two point three seven five. This is six hundredths away, and this is seven and a half hundredths away. Please make sure your warm-up and your workbook are filled in for Lesson 21.